Hi students, let's discuss the various tips to solve matching headings and paragraph questions in IELTS listening. Matching questions are very common in the IELTS listening exam, so expect to get one in your test. This type of question usually appears in sections 1 or 3 in which the recording is a conversation between two or more people. The question will contain two sets of information and you have to match them. You need to have a good strategy to answer matching questions successfully. Matching questions come in several different forms. Here are a couple of examples from the past papers. In the first example, you can see there are few options from A to E, which was given in the box. And under 1, 2, 3, 4, I need to identify which matches with what. In the second example, you can see there are three different options given, A, B, and C. And in the question, it clearly says you may choose any letter more than once, which means that the answers can be repeated. Now, moving on to the strategy and tips. You will have a short time to prepare before the speakers begin talking. Use this time to familiarize yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. The first tip is analyzing the question. One of the biggest challenges with matching questions in IELTS listening test is that they can be confusing when you first see them. So start by analyzing the question to make sure you fully understand what you have to do. The step one is first, you need to understand the relationship between the question sentence and the question options. Highlight the key part of the question sentence and think about how it relates to the question options. Step two, next, look at the questions in relation to the answer options A, B or C. The tip two is answer order. In matching questions, the questions will be mentioned in order in the recording, but the answer options will appear randomly. So for our sample question, the speakers will first talk about media studies, then women and power, then culture and society, etc. The three decisions options as to whether or not to take each course could be heard in any order. The third is synonyms and paraphrasing. Synonyms and paraphrasing will be used extensively in the recording and another good use of your preparation time is to quickly think of some words and phrases that might be used to express the information in the question. First, let's think about the three answer options. Jack is not going to say, I will definitely do the introduction to cultural theory course. I may or may not do the culture and society course. I won't do the identity and popular culture course. He will use different phrases to convey the same meaning. You will need to listen out for both positive and negative vocabulary and sentence structures. For example, I'm very interested in women and power, so I think I'll go for that one. I'll give media studies a miss as I did a similar module last year. Tip 4 is watch out for distractors. 
The examiners will try and catch you out with distractors. A distractor is a word or a phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. So you may be given an answer and then you have it taken away again. Here are some sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. I'd really like to study identity and popular culture, but I don't like the lecturer, so I'm not going to take it. I discounted culture and society. However, a friend took it last year and loved it, so I'm seriously considering it as an option. But and however are common distractors, but there are many other words and phrases that can be used to change the information given. There are several present in the recording, so listen carefully for them. The best approach to marking the answers is to write A, B or C next to a question as soon as you think you've heard the correct answer, but continue to listen carefully in case you find that you're wrong. If this happens, you can quickly cross it through and write the correct answer beside it. You can write on your test paper as much as you want to. You'll have 10 minutes at the end of the listening test to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now it's time to practice. So listen to the audio and answer the questions below. Match the solutions given by the tutor against the problems faced by the student. Now here we have problems faced by the student A and B and there are a few solutions given by the tutor and I need to match one with either A or B. So here the recording begins. There is a conversation between a professor and a student. Beep! Professor, I see. Take control of this time and organize it carefully. Time that is not organized can disappear very quickly, leaving you rushing to catch up on your work or even running out of time altogether. Learn the essentials of time management. First, make weekly or monthly plans that set out your study targets for the week or month ahead. Schedule time for reading and work out roughly how much you want to read in each session. Plan time to research and write your essays or prepare projects so that you do not have to stay up late doing them at the last minute. Have you made up such a plan? Student. No, I haven't. That's obviously something I should do. I can easily fill that free time with the extra studies. Professor. No, no. That's not what I mean. Don't plan to spend all your extra time studying. Remember to leave some time free for hobbies, sports, seeing friends or simply relaxing. If you do not take time to enjoy yourself, your work will suffer and you will miss out on many other worthwhile experiences. Make a timetable for your free time if you like. Plan when to see your friends, play your favorite sport or just hang out. Don't forget to revise your plans if you need to. As you progress through your course, you will get a better idea of how much time you need for different activities. Adjust your schedules and keep them realistic. Student. So you are saying that I need to keep a balance between work and play and keep an eye on things to make sure that I'm not doing too much or too little? Professor, that's right. Feel free to show me your plan when you have made one. Student, thank you. My next problem is coping with my course. Living abroad in a new environment makes studying more challenging than usual. I'm worried about my progress and about how I will cope with examinations. Professor, these concerns are natural, but do not let them overwhelm you. Here are two simple ways. You can stay in control of your studies. First, ask for regular meetings with your tutor. In your case, ask me to review your progress and discuss any problems. You're doing that now, so you've taken the first step. 
Let me know if you are having any language difficulties, though in your case that seems doubtful. As you're probably aware, there is a language center here where all students can use language learning materials but is probably not of much use to you. Second, why not try to form a mutual support group with other international students to discuss the common challenges and to share useful ideas? This can be particularly helpful if you find the teaching methods very different from those you have experienced before. Another type of support group could be other students in your subject area. Get together with the students on similar courses to discuss the issues, swap ideas and give each other support. Student. Yes, the second idea is particularly good. Beep. All right, so here, we heard the conversation between the professor and the student. Now let's come to the question. The first solution is make weekly or monthly plans. Now the answer is B, which is time. For the first question, it is clear from the conversation when the professor said first to make weekly or monthly plans that set out your target for the week. Plan time. So he emphasized a lot on time. Now for the second, third and fourth questions, it is clear from the conversation when the professor emphasized on regular meetings with the tutor, using language learning materials, and to form a mutual support group. So the answer to this is the course. For the fifth and sixth questions, the answer is B, which is time, as it is clear from the conversation when the professor says, if you do not take time to enjoy yourself, your work will suffer and you will miss out on many other worthwhile experiences and then to adjust your schedules and keep them realistic. So I hope this practice solves your queries on how to solve the sentence completion questions and the matching headings. So thank you for watching my video. Keep watching more IELTS listening videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.